This is how you invest in a professional way where you are taking a lot of risk, but you are balancing that out with assets that are gonna grow over time anyway, letting you take this high risk with that high potential reward. Hey guys, this is gonna be a concise investment strategy video for cryptocurrency, you know, getting exposure to higher risk portions and lower risk portions of the market. So even if we make some mistakes and some things go badly, we have the assets there that will grow over time so we don't actually end up losing money. This is what the video is gonna go over, a long-term strategy that most people are probably best to have, diversified portfolio, dollar cost averaging over time. I'm gonna go over what a barbell strategy is, high risk and low risk. This is more tactical if you're looking to grow an account more quickly. When should we rebalance and how should we do that? I'm gonna go over that. Also, how do we grow a small account? How do we actively manage a smaller account and try and grow that way more than just passively investing? Then I'm gonna go over passive income strategies because passive income, earning extra on your assets that you already own and compounding your gains over multiple years is an unbelievable strategy that works extremely well. And a lot of people just forget about this. You know, just earning maybe four, five, six percent yearly can mean massive gains over the long term. So I'll go over that as well. This is what we'll cover in the video. If you are an absolute beginner and first timer, then definitely check out my ultimate crypto course. I'll link that in the description. It's totally free. It's on YouTube. You can get in from you know the first step on what cryptos are and everything like that. But I'm going to go over more of the investment strategy in this video. Also, a lot of the things I talk about in this video will be listed. I'll link leave the link here. It's moneyzg.co forward slash tools. You can see all of the different exchanges and everywhere you can get passive income, different things like that. So I'll leave all of that linked in the description. Other helpful videos and everything like that will all be linked in the description for you. So firstly, what we need to do is understand what dollar cost averaging is. This is for, you know, what I would say most people would go for, which is a, um, a diversified, diversified portfolio of, let's say, five, seven, eight cryptocurrencies, and you just dollar cost average over time. Dollar cost averaging is when you take an amount and you invest that over a certain amount of time. So let's say you have uh, $400 per month, every month, in the same coin or in the same collection of coins, that's it. So in January, February, this should be March in the middle, April and May, you just buy you know, $400, $400, $400, whatever it is. Um, now you can do this per coin or per collection of assets. Um, so you can just choose this very simply. I'm gonna show you actually on Binance right here, they actually have an auto invest plan that basically does this for you. This is dollar cost averaging over time. So very simply choose your coin, come to create a plan and you can see all you do is just choose how much you want to invest, 100, how often do you want to invest, weekly, on a Monday, that's it. As long as you have those US dollars in your account, it will just automatically buy over time. And you can set that up for as many coins as you want. It's not just Binance that do this, many other um, you know, exchanges do this as well. They will have dollar cost averaging features or you can just do it manually as well, it's up to you. But this for most people, dollar cost averaging, buying, you know, at different prices over time is gonna be the best way. And I would say if you have conviction and you wanna hold those over the long term, dollar cost averaging is you know, what we can do. So leading on from dollar cost averaging, which is how you actually enter into positions over the long term, we can look at the first type of strategy, which is the 50, 25, 25. You can obviously change these percentages to suit yourself. It doesn't have to be hard and fast, but this is like an overall strategy. So you know, if you're looking at your overall investments and you wanted to you know, get into some cryptocurrency, um, I'll do the crypto only version in a second. It's actually the same. You can just obviously put whatever assets you want depending on how much risk that you wanna take. So 50% and then 25% in possibly something even lower risk and then 25% in those higher risk names. So 50% as an overall strategy would be something like the S&P 500, you know, possibly the NASDAQ if you wanted, but the S&P 500 is probably the bellwether here, the best 500 companies in America. It's basically an index of the American economy, which is the strongest, right? So you just invest in that over the long term and that will kind of um, help, you know, battle inflation. Um, and then we look at 25%. You know, in the past that might have been bonds, but what I would do here is put USDC, USDT in here because these are stable coins. It's basically like owning dollars, but you can lend them out uh, in many crypto, crypto protocols for let's say 10%. Now S&P 500 over the long term averages about 10 to 15, 10, 12% a year. But you obviously have volatility there. With US dollars, you have zero volatility, but you're getting 10% through some certain DeFi strategies and um, actually just using really easy consumer platforms that give you like seven, eight, nine, 10% yield on dollars. 
you know, why not do that? So you have some volatility and some upside here. You also have the same yield from a dollar. And then that 25% can be your crypto risk assets. Split this up into four or five different names, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, and you can split those up how you want. That would be an overall strategy. But obviously we can do that uh, for crypto as well. Exactly the same thing, right? 50, 25, 25. But again, we're looking at low risk, medium risk, high risk, something like that, right? So 50% would obviously be BTC, and you might do BTC ETH here, and right? You could split that up any way that you want, depending on you know how much you know risk you want to take. Now, 25% here, what would that be? You're looking at kind of mid cap coins in this case, and obviously this goes down to doing research, which I'll get onto later on in the video. So as we come over to Coin Gecko, what you're looking at right is those kind of smaller mid cap coins. Um, that you want to get into and you think, you know what, this is actually a good opportunity and I think this has room to grow. Um, I'll get on to researching in a second, but obviously like Solana, Terra, Cardano, Avalanche, Polkadot, you know, these are mid cap coins. What I mean by that is you can see their valuation on the right, 20 billion, 20 billion, 30 billion, 32 billion. That's very different to what Bitcoin and Ethereum are with, you know, their 10x and 20x higher than that, right? So these are smaller projects and they have potential to grow uh, quick, uh, you know, with a with a launch or, you know, maybe they do something with the blockchain that um, gets a lot of users on board and so they can grow a lot faster. Now, obviously, there is some downside here is that mid cap coins potentially are just smaller businesses. And so they may not actually grow as much as Bitcoin. Bitcoin for me is the only coin out there possibly Ethereum that can get past five, six, seven trillion in market cap because it is genuinely a completely different thing. It's a potential worldwide kind of store of value asset. Uh, not yet, but potentially. Something like um, near protocol, right, might be a good business, but it's never going to be a worldwide store of value asset that Bitcoin could be. So this is why these are kind of medium risk is that they're slightly more tactical. These are your long-term holds that can grow extremely large, whereas these mid-ranges are more tactical investments. You kind of ride them short-term for that, and I'll get onto rebalancing in a second. Then down here, you might want to split this into two or three into smaller coins or coins that you know you think actually this is way undervalued. So you come down here and you you pick maybe three or four coins that you think you know what this ecosystem is pretty good. Something like Loopring, something like Stacks. Okay, these are kind of side chains or secondary chains that, you know, could potentially in the future have quite good growth, um, you know, if they, you know, incentivize usage or if they kind of end up being used. Loopring is a, a secondary network, has its own wallet. They're developing it now. Potentially over time that could have good growth from a valuation of 1 billion, you know, quickly up to maybe 2, 3, 4 billion. So, Obviously, don't recommend any of these, but you know these are your higher risk, smaller coins that are definitely more tactical short term, and you can ride them for higher short term profits. Um, the next thing I want to look at is index investing. Now, index investing is actually becoming possible in cryptocurrency, which I think is a great thing. In previous years, even six months ago, you couldn't really do it, but now you can start to do it. And index investing is when you just buy a collection of names in a specific sector, right? So you may want to do this. So again, you have your kind of low risk, right? Which could be BTC, ETH, and some of that could be USDC um, if you want, or you could even, you know, put this up to 60%, right? If you want to put some USDC in there. So what are you doing with your mid, your kind of mid caps? You can actually go and invest in an index. Now an index is, like I said, a collection of different um, cryptocurrencies within a sector. So if we look at the DeFi Pulse Index, we'll just click on learn more here. You're investing in a bunch of different tokens, right? So you wouldn't invest in all of these. Usually this is too many coins to kind of keep up with. But what essentially you're doing is saying, hey, index co-op, you kind of take care of all that and just give me exposure to DeFi, right? So if you really just kind of want to be a passive investor and you just want exposure and you want to put some money down, you could do that and say, right, I want 25% of my um, portfolio to be um, in DeFi. Right. And I'm just going to let index co-op, you know, kind of take care of it. And I'm happy that they're investing in kind of the best projects in the space. If you're very passive, I think that's a very good idea. Now, um, obviously, you, you're going to be investing in maybe some coins that you wouldn't be. But that's the whole point of diversifying into a sector. Um, and then obviously a metaverse index going to be way more high risk. Right. So that would be going down here 
where you'd put, okay, I'm going to split this in two right here, um, where I'm just going to have a metaverse index. And I'm going to let, um, you know, an indexer invest in all of these coins, right? And so really what you want to do is just hope that some of these, you know, kind of pop off. Um, and that kind of diversifies you a little bit. So I didn't, didn't show you there, right? So you see all of these different coins here. So there's a lot of coins. You wouldn't invest in each one individually, but hopefully over time that will take up your high risk, right? So you can either go specific coins and manage five to 10 or eight yourself, um, or you can kind of go into indexing and say, I want this part of my portfolio to be in DeFi, this part in, in Metaverse, um, this, this part in kind of bridges and infrastructure tokens, and then the rest in kind of BTC, ETH, and USDC. So here's the downside of doing that and being diversified over time. It's great in the you know normal markets because they're very mature. And so the top 500 businesses in the States are all really good businesses. And so you kind of don't mind having a big basket of them, right? But dollar cost averaging, um, is when you invest over time and it, it kind of uh, plays by the book of time in the market is better than timing the market. Most of us are forced to DCA anyway because you know, we don't have our whole amount ready to go, you know, all at once. Diversification though is a double-edged sword, right? Can you really diversify in cryptocurrencies? Can you, are, are you actually diversifying or are you just buying a load of garbage, right? Are you just saying, hey, what, you, you know what, I'm just going to buy lots of coins because I'm diversified. But what you're doing is actually just selling good coins that have a good future for a bunch of really risky trash. And so that's something always to be aware of is that if you're buying 15 cryptocurrencies, I wouldn't say that's diversifying that much, right? Like Bitcoin is going to uh, control a lot of this market. And just buying a load of rubbish coins isn't diversifying, which is supposed to be good. You're just basically buying coins that maybe don't have a future and are just way too risky, right? Because Bitcoin and Ethereum still have so much room to grow. Um, this will not grow your portfolio very fast and you will miss a lot of tactical opportunities. If you really want to get into crypto, these are the opportunities where you can grow a small account very, very quickly, 5, 10 X, um, just by being in the right place at the right time. If you want to get a bit more tactical, then we have to move on to the barbell strategy, which misses out all of the mid level stuff and just basically has high risk and low risk. This is a really old strategy that works and actually it was used with equities and, and even bonds as well. But you can use this in cryptocurrency because crypto assets represent every single other asset just in crypto versions. Have you got bonds in crypto? Yes, you do, because you have stable coins that you can lend out and earn 11 percent not a bond, but you know, it's kind of the same thing in reality. You have gold type assets like Bitcoin or actual gold. You can have, you can just buy a crypto called Pax G, which is going to track the price of gold. That's a stable coin of gold. Um, and then you have high risk assets and you have an, an asset like Ethereum, which is, you know, essentially a business that is just chucking out cash, which is earning you yield. So you can you can actually invest in uh, an old fashioned way with these crypto um, investments. So how much do you want to put to low risk and high risk? Low risk, you could put 60 percent. High risk, you could put 40 percent, something like that. You can make this 70, 30 if you want or 50, 50 if you want. This is this is up to you and kind of how much you want to put in. But the whole idea of this is that when you invest in this high risk stuff, you really, you know, are just there to invest in that huge upside. And you don't worry too much about the downside because this low risk portion is essentially over time more probably going to grow and kind of make up for the high risk stuff. So what you're saying is, um, you know, this low risk is going to bail me out if this high risk stuff loses 50% value and kind of never returns. Um, so what this does is kind of bet more on the winners. Now this low risk, USDC is obviously ultra low risk, um, just like, a, you know, earning 11%. BTC here, you know, ETH, I would say they are the three low risk and other stable coins. Other than that, you've got that medium risk stuff, which is kind of the mid-level layer one networks, um, which again, for me, some of them are very expensive now. And so are they going to grow or are they just kind of where they're at? So that you might actually go down the list and say, these are some much higher risk opportunities that have a potential of going 5, 10x. And I am uh, fine investing 
in like five of these, five names, maybe four won't do anything. But if one goes five or 10x fairly quickly, that is how you, you know, grow a portfolio with the barbell protecting you. If they all go, <laughs> then obviously you've still got these investments here that you would consider uh, to grow over time and kind of bail you out of that higher risk, higher return strategy. Now, obviously this is crypto focused. Like I said, if you want some stocks or whatever in here as well, you can do that. For me, like I said, getting 11% on a stable coin, is just an absolute gimme. And it really takes the risk out of the portfolio. You take the volatility out of it uh, and you have that guarantee, almost guaranteed return. Obviously it's a variable interest rate, um, but it's just an absolute gimme getting 11% return on dollars. So I'll go over an actual example of that with assets. You can do that on the crypto side and the just overall portfolio side. For example, on the crypto side, you might have BTC, ETH, USDC, and have that in a strategy. And then the 40 is just high risk stuff, right? We're looking at YOLOs, right? GameFi, small new networks that you know are bubbling up on, on the surface. And I'll talk about some of those in a second, right? Uh, gaming opportunities, you know, metaverse, things like that are games that are basically very new and bubbling up and you know that in six months time they're going to be launching their game right so like alluvium or something like that six 12 months um they're going to be launching the game and you know that's kind of your tactical exit strategy for those high risk uh plays obviously on the overall side you know what you do here is just stocks usdc lend that out or usdt and then you know you might want to put some btc in here you know even five percent or whatever um, what you, you know, that 5% of the 60%, right? So that's your kind of low risk. And then these high risk, depending on who you are, you might want to put BTC and ETH in here. If you've got 60% stocks and USDC, then you could put your BTC and ETH in here as like half of this. And then these are your YOLOs, right? Those new networks, the games, things like that, that you want to really go into really early on and kind of ride them through. So you've made your investments then, how do you manage your portfolio and when do you rebalance them? This is a really difficult question. You can't just rebalance when it reaches a certain percent up. You can put those strategies in yourself if that's okay with you, but it's, it's definitely personal. So what I would say is rebalance when there are too many coins. If your portfolio looks like this um, and you just can't keep up with all of the coins, that's when you think, you know what, I need to kind of get out of some of these names and concentrate my portfolio a little bit. I'm also a little bit like this at the moment. Um, and I've said in the crypto course and the private member groups, I'll leave them all linked below if you want to check out the crypto course and um, see my portfolio and my trades or anything. It's moneyzg.academy is the website. Um, I've said, you know, I need to cut some names because when when your portfolio is getting a little bit big, it's it's difficult to you know, um, keep up with all, all of the goings on. Um, and so one thing to know is that, you know, when you're spread too thin, that that's not great. And if you're happy with all of the investments, you don't need to rebalance. If you just think I'm happy holding all of these, then, then good. If you're up a certain amount in a coin, um, then you might want to get out. And this is the difference between trading and investing. So what I would say here is if you can't keep up on all the research of all of your coins, you've probably got too many. If you feel overwhelmed, too many, then you have too many. Why would I ever rebalance BTC and ETH? Why would I ever sell the winners to buy new losers? Well, if I need some cash and I want to be more tactical and short term in my trading, then maybe. But, you know, I don't rebalance my winners. When would you have rebalanced Bitcoin? When it was a 200, 400, 800, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000? When would you rebalance Bitcoin? You don't rebalance Bitcoin, right? So, you know, rebalancing really is more for uh, trades than investments. Those short-term trades definitely rebalance. If you've picked an altcoin and you've gone into a good trade and you're up kind of 80%, you know, maybe sell 30, 40% of it, take your profits and then let the rest, the rest ride, put the profits into Bitcoin or Ethereum, put the profits into stable coins that you can earn 11% on, right? So the difference between trading and investing here is if you just have a balanced portfolio, then you just put the money in over time and let the winners ride and compound into your winners over time because over time the losers will make themselves known as well and you just slowly cut them out and you just write them off but if you're short-term and tactical and trading 
right? If you're up in an altcoin trade that you personally think, I'd like to take some profits here, then do it and put them back into either BTC or ETH like that. And so you have, you know, an amount, eight, 10, you know, it could be five, whatever is, is good for you of coins that your portfolio, you think I can keep track of all these and I'm happy for these. So that is when I would rebalance. It's up to you and it's up to what you're trading versus what you're investing. So if we are looking at being more tactical and we want to get into some shorter term trades or some trades that we think have a higher potential upside over the short or medium term, how do we look at these and you know what is good versus what is not going to work out? So obviously this is up to you again. Time horizon is super important. You know How long do you want to trade for? Anything under three months is just pure day trading and you're going to get lucky or not based on you know some news events. Six, 12, 18 months is going to be more of a a long swing trade or a trade based on, you know, fundamental growth of a blockchain. Maybe they're launching a new product. Maybe they're actually launching the chain. Maybe they're launching an upgrade of the chain. That would be a 12 month out kind of thing because you want to get in early for that. What is the potential valuation of that coin versus the competitors? What is the actual risk of that? Um, and then what stage of growth is it in? I'll go over that now. That obviously this is really, you know, in depth kind of doing your own research. Um, I'm going to, you know, look, uh, point you in this direction. I actually have loads of videos on this in the crypto course, uh, kind of a four step guide on how to actually research coins step by step. Um, and then how to invest as well in those coins and get into them through DeFi investing and, uh, portfolio construction. So I'll link that in the description cause I can't go over most of the things in this video as it's trying to be short, but what we're really looking at is what's the time horizon and what's the potential valuation, right? So you can come over to the list of cryptos and we look at Bitcoin, you know, under a trillion now. So over the long term, what do you think this is going to be? An international store of value asset, you know, many trillions, potentially. Then we're looking at ADA. This is more of a business or a kind of a smaller blockchain, right? That is trying to be decentralized finance and obviously being um, just a very different kind of technology infrastructure, very different to kind of Bitcoin, right? In, in terms of worldwide scope. And so you don't think this is ever going to be more than Bitcoin if Bitcoin is successful. So you're looking at a smaller market cap, right? A smaller potential valuation. Then we're looking at Binance Smart Chain um, and we're thinking, well, this is even more centralized, right? It's a very centralized chain. And so you have to treat it more as a business. Now, businesses can be worth a lot of money. So the Apple is worth three trillion, so you can get up there. But as a technology business, as a technology infrastructure, you're looking at the market cap being 70 billion already. Now, many banks in the world are 30, 20 billion. So this is already more expensive. What's the potential upside for this? Potentially more from here, right? If it becomes an asset that people start um, staking and collateralizing, then it can definitely be worth more as you just have fewer sellers. And so you're looking at maybe the same as, as kind of uh, Cardano overall as, as terms of a, a very good financial infrastructure. And then you're looking at something like a star. Um, if you don't know a star, um, you know, it's basically a polka dot ecosystem coin. You can see this one's down at number 147. What's the difference between a star and Binance Smart Chain? Um, well, not much really in terms of how you use them, right? This is a blockchain, it's EVM, it's Ethereum compatible. It's just much newer and has far less use, but it's part of the Polkadot ecosystem. And so you're thinking, okay, potentially that can have you know good usage. So you're looking at the valuation right here and the market cap is 500 million. This is way lower than Binance Smart Chain and, and, um, and Cardano. Now, obviously it has far fewer users, it's much newer, but what you're thinking is for a trade, you know, your time horizon, can you actually get into something that is way, way smaller like a star and ride that as, you know, as a trade, as a risky trade, right? So what do you want to do? How do you want your portfolio to be? You can choose all of these things, um, but obviously, you know, the, the absolute market cap will dictate how you, what you want to invest in over the long term. And the current market cap, like a star being very small in comparison to its competitors, even smaller competitors around two to three billion, a star's 500 million, you're seeing a discrepancy here. This would be a trading opportunity potentially um, over the short term. Now I want to get onto finding opportunities that can potentially grow over the medium term with these kind of, you know, uh, altcoin, more risky investments, right? 
what you're looking for is something to happen to make the price re-rate. A product launch, an app launch, something going well, TVL, total value locked, going onto the system. These are all metrics uh, by which the market uses to rate and give, an, give a valuation to blockchain ecosystems. And so if you know certain things are coming up, you can place yourself in a trade before that. Is a new coin launching on the blockchain or a new application? So this is obviously a big opportunity. This is good for not just the coin, that coin itself, which is way more risky, but the chain that it's on, right? So for example, Astar, which I showed you, they had about five or six applications all launch at once an exchange, staking, things like that. So that's a big amount of applications, usage, users, and money flying into the system, and that helped out a star. New blockchains launching. What I mean by that is uh, Optimism. So that's a layer two for Ethereum. Arbitrum, layer two for Ethereum. ZK Sync, layer two for Ethereum. Layer two for Ethereum is a massive narrative, and so obviously you're looking to place yourself in a trade there. You can't invest in these coins yet because they don't have coins, but when they do, you could get into those or just get into Ethereum because this is the biggest upgrade to Ethereum ever, which is getting a second layer on its network that reduces fees. With lower fees, you get more use cases and more users, gaming, you know, just more people that are, are willing to use it because it's now very cheap. So you either play these coins when they come out or you position yourself in Ethereum and wait for this massive upgrade to happen. Airdrops as well, but don't get scammed. Airdrops happen for um, on a lot of new chains to incentivize people to come over, use the chain, actually use the chain, set up a wallet on the chain, get some assets in there, do some transactions in some of the apps. You may get an airdrop when a token comes out or an NFT or something like that. And obviously on, on, um, on Cardano, a huge amount of applications are launching now. So that's obviously good for Cardano ADA, but some of those coins as well. So I'll just show you a couple of examples here. This is Arbitrum. Arbitrum is a layer two for Ethereum. So this is a massive opportunity. All of these amazing applications are already going to launch on um, Arbitrum or, or coming soon. Arbitrum doesn't have a token, but you set up a wallet through your MetaMask with Arbitrum, you use the blockchain, you use the bridge, you're gonna pay some fees, but when a token comes, that's a potential airdrop token. Same for Cardano as well. Cardano has so many applications launching. So you can see all of these applications, go onto the Cardano blockchain, go onto a DEX, you can see all of these different applications. Now, obviously you're gonna to have to know these applications. All of these have a Twitter account, the good ones anyway. You can see what they are, you can see the community, you can see what they're building, and obviously you get in. Now, what I would say again, going back to the previous section is look at the valuation and see how this is valued in comparison to its peers. So for example, Sunday Swap is an exchange. Now you can see the market cap, 43 million market cap. It's actually not, not a lot, right? Now it has a massive total supply in comparison to its circulating supply. Um, I wouldn't read too much into that. This happens with DEXs, but what you can see is that there was a launch of the token. What always happens is the launch, it launches at a higher price, gets sold off as people get bored. And then, you know, a, a few months pass over, they come out with an upgrade. The token gets launched on some big exchanges like Binance. Suddenly the thing goes 4X again. It just happens every single time. It's just so predictable. Um, but what you see here is it has, you know, a market cap of 44 million ADA. ADA is around a dollar. So let's say $40 million market cap. Going to other DEXs, you're looking at anywhere from 100 million, 200 million, 300 million. So that's a potential to get in there um, and wait, just wait till that becomes listed on big exchanges. And some people only buy when it's listed on big exchanges. So you're taking these risks here, getting in early. Potentially this DEX actually just becomes not very used and some other DEXs beat it out in terms of volumes. But that's what, that's what this is, right? This is high risk investing. Um, so this is what that is. And you can come down, um, Ardana, Dana token, 12 million market cap. It's not a lot. Um, you know, we're looking at, let's say, World Mobile token, 128 million. Seems pretty expensive. It's quite unique, that project. Meld is a lending protocol, 123 million. Um, again, not that cheap, actually, when you look at other lending protocols. You know, but you have Aave, which is worth about 2 billion. Um, you know, that's, that's 20x this but it's much bigger as, a, as an ecosystem. Meld hasn't even launched, right? So what you're doing here is trying to, you know, maybe get some of these and, and get in early enough 
and see where they are in comparison to some of the peers. Now, obviously, these are much riskier, much more early stage, but really what you're doing is getting in during a lull and waiting for the product to launch, have some hype, that's your trade. So that happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work out, but that is getting in early doors. So where do we actually go ahead and trade? I think you need a bunch of different exchanges and accounts on them because different exchanges list different types of um, altcoins. So Binance by far has the biggest selection. I'm talking about Binance.com. I'll leave a link for them below. If you're in the US, Binance US just isn't great. Sorry about that. Uh, not really much you can do there. Um, have multiple exchanges because you know FTX, Binance, Bybit, um, you know, they all list certain different things and they might have access to an opportunity. Mostly you want low cost blockchains if you've got a small account, right? Like Binance, Matic, if you want to tra trade on a DEX. Ethereum's a no-go unless you're an absolute whale. Um, it just is a no-go. You need at least $50,000 per trade to trade on Ethereum because the gas fees are so high. You just, it's just unusable to be honest, unless you're a whale, um, unless you're doing specific things. Every time you interact with a smart contract, it's going to cost you a fortune. Um, Binance Smart Chain is way cheaper, but it has a load of just garbage on there. So some really good coins, but a lot of projects, kind of you know low-grade projects do launch on there because it's cheap. Um, similar for Matic and AVAX, um, but again, they have some really good projects, some really high-class coins um, that you can use to invest and get some yield and everything like that, just with cheaper fees. So they're great. But obviously, a lot of the low, you know, low-class coins are not the fault of any of these blockchains. Now, if you've got a smaller account, going through different blockchains and paying fees is not good. It's going to eat away at your kind of income. So what you might want to do is use centralized exchanges, Binance, FTX. There's nothing wrong with these if you have a few thousand bucks an account um, to kind of get into some altcoins because they actually have lending and some staking um, rewards as well that you can use to earn that passive income. Use Celsius. Celsius are great and they have a lot of coins that you can shift off into DeFi. They give you $50 as a deposit bonus. If you make a deposit on there, they'll give you $50 of Bitcoin. Nexo is exactly the same. They'll give you $25 with a deposit and they pay passive income on every asset in, in, in the wallets, anywhere from like five to, you know, 15%, whatever the asset is. So that's a great way to earn passive income over time to really, really compound your gains. And you might want to get a hardware wallet as well. If you've got over kind of $5,000 worth, um, something like Ledger, I'll link them in the description as well. To keep up with your portfolio and make sure you see everything in one place, you can use a portfolio tracker. There's loads out there. One that's really good is actually Zapper. So if you have an Ethereum based wallet, that means Ethereum, Blockchain, Arbitrum, Binance, Smart Chain, Avalanche, Polygon, all of these different EVM chains that you use with MetaMask. You can see all of them in a dashboard. This is completely for free. It's a really good one. You can see all of your balances across all of your different um, wallets in the networks. You can also see your NFTs. You can have like a profile with your NFT name in there. And then you can see any airdrops or incentives that you um, have access to. It will actually show you these and it says, hey, you've got like $10 to pick up. Go over to the chain and claim that. So this is totally free, zappa.fi. There's also Coinly, this is paid for. This um, actually links to your exchanges as well. So if you have Binance, Coinbase, anything like that, you can link it up via an API um, and then it will show you all of your trades and balances across all of your exchanges. And it also can um, create a tax report for you at the end of the year. This is paid, but some people might wanna use that. I'll leave a link for them in the, in the description. And then something like CoinMarketCap, uh, this is totally free. Up in the right hand corner, you can set up um, a portfolio. It's manual, but it looks really good. Shows you all of the data and everything like that. Um, and that's completely free. Like I said, this cannot be financial advice, but you can use these strategies to suit your needs. These are just basic strategies that you can use outside and inside of crypto. If you wanna know more about doing research, really getting to know crypto from the very beginning all the way to putting together a portfolio, um, private Discord groups, I'm in there as well. Different people talking about different strategies, what they're doing, where they're going, how to use DeFi, how to use passive income, how to use blockchain specifically. It's all in here in my crypto course. I also update this over time for free as well for existing users with the latest research and my findings in crypto. So I'll leave that linked in the description. I'm James with MoneyCG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.